Good morning, traders. This is the Silver Bullet Trade Hour Review for Friday, May 12th. And there was two, possibly three setups in the AM session and two setups in the PM session. So before we look at the setups that occurred inside the fair value gaps that I have noted here, this is... Um, I'm going to take you to the SMT chart and prior to New York Open or at New York Open on NQ, you can see we made a new high, whereas ES, we failed to make a new high and YM, we failed to new, make a new high. So that was leaning towards a bearishness in the market, not to mention if you look at dollar here. What had been happening is, first of all, dollar had been strengthening. And then at uh, the New York Open, it ran up here and then the little pullback. And then especially for the silver bullet trade time, that 10 to 11 uh, dollar was just bearish. So just want to bring those into the picture to begin to frame some of the setups that we're going to look at in the silver bullet trade. So. And this is a little different view than some of my previous videos. I'm putting dollar um, underneath the S&P here as well. So noting we had we had SM, SMT divergence between NASDAQ, ES, and YM. Well, if you look at what dollar is doing in this period, so here's ES, here's dollar. If dollar is making lower highs, ES should be making higher highs. And for this time frame, it's not. So this is really showing a weakness as well in ES. So you've got some extra confluences there. So and this is why it's always good to come to your charts, you know, at least 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes before you plan to start trading so that you can look back and see, you know, what has the market been doing? And that's, this is where you can take the time and identify these things before the silver bullet trading hour so and a uh, little spoiler alert i did get into a trade that was not a silver bullet trade um it was up here because i was anticipating lower prices because of that smt divergence that i was talking about and i'll show that near the end of the video but as far as uh silver bullet trading once this 10 o'clock candle um or excuse me 10 o'clock candle is right here let me move this vertical line to the 10 959 so we know exactly where we're looking at for in between these vertical lines so this is the 10 o'clock candle price comes down and then it just consolidates there's also and i'll zoom in to make this easier to see we also have a volume imbalance that i put in gray right here and while you might look at this and say, I don't see any fair value gaps in here. Well, the reason I have this rectangle in red is because if you look at the five minute chart, let me go back to that time. What you see is a very crystal clear, beautiful fair value gap between this candle's low and this candle's high. So I recommend you definitely have five minute, 15 minute fair value gaps drawn on your charts because they can provide you a lot of information, uh, especially when in the silver bullet trading, when you're looking for one and maybe it's right under your nose. So, but for you, you might be feeling, well, I'm supposed to be looking for a fair value gap on the one minute candles or, or 30 second or 15 second. That's gonna be for you to decide how, how strict you're gonna be versus understanding what price is showing you in real time. So here's my point. Price at, this is the 10 o'clock price. After 10 o'clock price pops down and it would be 10.05 that we would finally end up with this fair value gap. So the 10.04 candle when it closes is 10.05. So this is 10.05. And so that's why we have this gap. Well, once price pulls up into that five minute candles gap, uh, that's, that's a trade. So trade number one, 
And remember, we had really good confluence. We had the SMT divergence still showing bearishness. We also saw that that, uh, that divergence between dollar, um, first of all, dollar was strengthening. And then just prior to this trading period, we saw that when dollar was making lower highs, ES was not making higher highs, and it should have been. So you could have been traded in this period, or if you notice this volume uh, imbalance, you could have traded as price. It gave you, I mean, from 1009 to 1028, maybe uh, it gave you over 20 minutes to make a decision that you were going to get into this trade short. Um, so I'm, I'm considering that all very strong reasons to have gone short. Um, and then once price drop down and we'll just or let me put this on so everyone can see anywhere in here you know five point stop loss is way up here you don't get stopped out and five points you you get that no problem price is coming down we finally get another fair value gap price pulls into it so if you would have gone short in here with a five point stop loss that you would have gotten stopped out if you would have if you would have gone in near the bottom of this um, if you would have gone in near the the top which this might sound like cherry picking i understand um but i just want to show the difference it depends on where you enter the trade you would not have gotten stopped out if you would have gone more near the high end of the fair value gap and you might say well that's totally cherry picking and i would tell you that it depends on the price action if the if the fair value gap is one where it's um it's it's a small fair value gap to begin with then you might expect price to cover it but here's one other thing i want to show you i don't i didn't have it noted previously but we did have this fair value gap right here All right now here's the kicker price does not pull into this until after 11. so this is this is not silver bullet trading time i recognize that it's just outside of it but interesting enough, price does pull into it and gives you a really good push down. So if you would have got into this trade based on, and like we have a volume imbalance right here between this, this candle is uh, closed and this candle is open. There's a volume imbalance. So here you had a fair value gap and you had a volume imbalance. Maybe you were trading more of the volume imbalance instead of the fair value gap. That right there. Change that to a dark color. You got in here, well, five points is up here. You don't get stopped out. And this is why, if you want to see every trade possibility, I mean, that's why I'm showing you this. So would so one of them would have worked. One may have may have failed, depending on right where you entered into the fair value gap. Um, and then another one would have worked for sure, because this one would not have gotten you stopped out. You would have been in the trade before 11. And after 11, you hit the five points. Because our draw on liquidity the whole time was the previous day's low. Um, and just to touch on that for a minute. <clears throat> and I'll hide these other drawings so it's not so messy. Generally, price will take out on the daily. The previous day's high or low. Look at your chart. Now, do you have inside bar days? Absolutely. Here's an inside bar day. The day before was an inside bar day. The, di the day prior to that was an outside bar day, meaning it took out the high and the low of the previous day. That doesn't always happen. That was on CPI, so um, it, it explains that pretty clearly. But if you look at all, a lot of these other um, candles, like this candle takes out that day's high. This candle takes out that high. This candle takes out that candle low. This candle takes out that candle low so on and so forth you, you can see it most of the time this is why also i think ict or you're supposed to be indicating part of the draw on liquidity is going to be a previous day high or low or a previous week high or low so the, the draw on liquidity the entire time was a sell we had so many things um pointing towards that because of like i said dollar strength smt diversions i now sound like a broken record but you can see that there there was multiple opportunities inside this AM session. But now there's one more hidden opportunity that may not have been as obvious to some, but I want to show you this because 
for those that are looking for fair, fair value gaps, you don't always get them. But ICT has taught us something called an implied fair value gap. And so this, again, being the 10 o'clock candle, if you look at the, that candle's wick, and then you have this bearish candle, and then in this candle you have a wick. Everything's being covered, right? There's no fair value gap. Well, ICT says that if you come to the middle point of these candles, any, ones, any one of them that are overlapping, and you come to the midpoints of them, you can draw out a fair value gap. So the midpoint of this candle is about, they're really close actually, the midpoints of these things. Um, let's actually put a fib on there just so that we can be as precise as possible for this example. there so yeah the midpoint i got it almost on the midpoint right there okay now this is a this takes some it's like you got to be uh you got to be on your toes for this kind of thing um because what happened is so at so 10 o'clock we open and then here's 1001 1002 once this 1002 candle closed you could have noted this as a fair value gap an implied fair value gap using the consequent encroachment of both wicks. So on this next candle, when it opens and it pops up into there, you could have been going long or short right there. Five point stop loss clearly it does not get stopped out. And you get your five in that first push down. And then price only comes right back up into the five minute fair value gap that you could have taken a trade as well. So you could have gotten your five right away at 10.03 to 1006 so in three minutes you could have got your five points now price pulls back up into the five minute fair value gap oh sorry so price pulls back up into that five minute fair value gap after this implied fair value gap so there's opportunity one here's opportunity two <laughs> And then the one that we noted down here, depending on where you entered in, if you entered in on the fair value gap that I've now taken away or the volume and balance. So you can see that that worked out pretty good. Now let's take a look at the PM session. All right, looking at the PM session. And with these for the exact timing, 1359 to 1501. All right, there we go. So here we have our PM session, 2 to 3 PM Eastern Standard Time. And prior to that, I'm just going to note, what did we do? We took out the previous day low. So liquidity has finally, it's been taken. We've, we've made it to the point of the previous day's low area that we had anticipated. Um, and then at 10 o'clock, uh, so we took it all out, popped back up, came down, and we've taken out the low one more time of the day. This was the low of the day at that point. Price took out that low, and as it went higher, it left behind a fair value gap. Now, let's look at some other things before we get into this. I want to build some context around this a little bit using dollar and, of course, looking at SMT divergence. So here is the dollar, right? Dollar had been strengthening all day. And then at noon, we hit this high and then it comes back 1300 and then it comes back up. So now we're, you know, 1400 is our. That's two o'clock. That's two to three that we're looking for, right? So here, technically, it's strengthening. So you might be like, well, if it's strengthening, why would I want to go long in ES? Well, here's another thing to use on how to, to look at dollar. Is in this point, dollar was clearly running. It had bullish sentiment, absolutely. But then it pulls back. And instead of it, continuing with some energy all of a sudden the candles all get a lot smaller and um you know even if you so if you look back here if you look at where the price was going they were small but there were some energetic moves causing price to really move just a little bit pullback which is normal if you think about the timing this is just before new york open we've obviously gone into lunch we don't get then a good push out of this and really what i'm here's what i'm trying to say in dollar once you see a big push in dollar, if it doesn't want to keep running hard and it just basically has a small range, 
at that point, you can almost just disregard dollar. Again, encourage you to look back on your charts and look at every time dollar just looked like it was consolidating. If you, if you then just look at the price action of ES and you look at things like S&T divergence, I think you're going to find that there's a time to ignore dollar and there's a time to pay attention to dollar. So I just wanted to point that out. But then let's look, look at what's happening on the S&T charts. So here is 14, uh, 1415 to 1440. So kind of late in the trading day. But what we get is we get SMT divergence right here. On, the, on this one, SM, YM makes a lower low. Which you can see there. I'm sorry, when I move my cursor right here. <laughs> um, these were making higher lows. So interesting, we have, we've, we've met, we've met the previous day's low and now we're starting to see SMT divergence on the, on the lows. So this is a, if we look at the time frame of when that occurred, that was at 440. So that was late in the trade. Now, you may not be a person that even cares about SMT divergence. Maybe you're like, I'm just looking for liquidity be, to be taken, and then I'm looking for a fair value gap entry opportunity. Well, that's why I have this noted here. This is your first opportunity right here. So price, you get that fair value gap. Price comes down, pulls into it right here. Five point stop loss is down here. You do not get stopped out and you get your five points. But using the confluence of SMT divergence, and that's part of my plan, I'm trying it it can help me be patient and I need to I need to incorporate patience into my trading. <laughs> that's why I'm doing doing this. Um, so remember that was at 1440 that we had that SMT divergence. So the 1450 is where you're going to actually get the 14, excuse me, 1440, when that candle closed, it's at 1445 or 245. So that would have been this candle right here, this bearish candle. So that candle closes. It's officially now the new five minute candle. We've had SMT divergence. We get a move up. And let me make this bigger so everyone can see it. Really good. <clears throat> We get this candle move up, we get our value gap, and you had one, two, three opportunities to get into this trade. Five point stop loss, clearly you do not get anywhere near being stopped out, and you get your five points, and you get that before three o'clock. So as you can see, there was, uh, there was opportunities again for SMT to work, for dollar to work, um, times when dollar was not as helpful, um, but the AM and PM silver bullet session um, at minimum provided one opportunity in each one of those sessions. Um, and I would submit to you based on what we already looked at that the AM session was even a little cleaner opportunities, even though it ran, um, it ran pretty hard uh, overall. So, but let's take a look at the trades that I took. So this was before the silver bullet trading time. As you can see, this is 10 o'clock right here. I got into a trade pre that because of SMT divergence and what I was seeing in dollar. So I got into a trade early um, and I got stopped out. But then as this candle went up and then it rejected it, those highs after snapping back, um, I had a consequent encroachment of that candle identified, and then I just went short as it, as it went into it with two contracts, and I was targeting previous day's low. And you can see the levels that I got at. Uh, I sold at 41.56 and three quarters, and I got out at 41.38 even. So that is not a silver bullet trade, but that is uh, right in line with. ICT's 2022 mentorship because this was a liquidity grab. I just got in early, but then as price came down, this is a breaker block right here. Um, because what we saw is but for a value gap, we have a lower high to the left of this bearish candle and a higher high to the right. So if you extend this out 
and you have the fair value gap, this would be what he would call a unicorn trade because you have, when you get a breaker inside of a fair value gap, that can really set up for a wonderful trade. So I know this is part isn't silver bullet. Just wanted to put it in there as a, uh, as a little extra cherry on top, if you will. So anyway, One last thing, traders, I realized I wanted to show you this uh, as far as the PM session. We talked about having SMT divergence between the, the three indices, but there was also divergence between dollar and ES. So even though, like I was saying, dollar was looking weak just because it was in a range, um, or let me phrase that, it wasn't, it wasn't really showing a, a bias one way or the other. Um, Obviously, in the early part of the day it was, but then it just went sideways. But and this, uh, this part is more important, I think, when price is already at the extreme levels. So if you look at what happened between dollar at the 14-15 uh, candle, and this is a 15-minute chart, what you'll see here is dollar between 14-15 and 14-30 candles made a higher high. Well, what what should be happening in ES if dollar is making a higher high? ES should be making a lower low, and we don't see that. If we look at if we look at ES, this fourteen fifteen to fourteen thirty candle made a higher low, and the way that it's been presented to me recently that I'm trying to get my head wrapped around is when you see that, that means ES is going into an intraday buy program and price should be going higher. And that's exactly what we saw. So, um, you know, there's different ways you can do this. Um, I kind of like just a 15 minute chart uh, to look for just, you know, two candles at a time to look for some divergence as well. So, and this is something I've just started, so I'm not making some huge claim out there. Uh, just, I'm just introducing it for you to look in your own charts and see if, you can see some of this little uh, micro um, divergence between dollar and ES. And just, just remember to keep it straight. If, if dollar is making higher highs, then ES should be making lower lows. And if it's not, then that means ES is actually showing some strength. Vice versa, let's say dollar is making lower lows and ES is failing to make higher highs. And that's showing weakness in ES because it's not taking advantage of the weak dollar and you should be anticipating bearishness in ES. So traders, I hope you had a, a uh, successful trading week. I hope you took more from the market than it took from you. May the ticks be forever in your favor. Peace out.